Hi, this is State Senator Mike Brady, and I'm welcoming you back from a periodic show called Brady Works. And it's about myself giving you, the listeners, information what's going on in the State House. And I also want to hear from our listeners out there and our viewers on cable. Um, it's very important that we give you information of what's going on in the State Senate as well as in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And as I mentioned, I want to hear from you. So if anybody would like to ever appear on the show, you're more than welcome. Please call my office at 617-722-1200. 617-722-1200. Or they can go online to michael.brady at masenate.gov. And today we're starting the show because it is June 15th, and this is going to be taped periodically, but today was World... Elder Abuse Awareness Day, and that's why I have the sign here. And if you know any elderly people that are dealing with uh, situations of abuse, and it doesn't mean to be just physical abuse, it could be abuse getting scammed on the phone call, scammed on their computers or whatever to try to take advantage of their finances, please call this toll-free number, 1-800-922-2275. And we had a nice event in downtown Brockton today to bring awareness to Elder Abuse Day. And uh, a little bit about elder abuse, I wanted to mention, um, you know, we've passed legislation to protect the elderly, we've passed legislation to help with, with the hospitals and health care, but we still have to bring more awareness to this. This is a very serious issue, and we want to make sure our elderly people are protected. And the next thing I want to talk about is COVID extension, because over 60% of the residents of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have gotten the vaccine. Uh, and please don't listen to those scams. We listen to the experts, our healthcare workers, our scientists. They are the experts. Don't fall for any false information. There is still available testing going on and also to get your vaccines. And I want to thank um, Sue Josh from the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, who's done a yeoman's work getting vaccine distribution directly from the federal government into the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And we've had vaccinations done up at the Shaw Center of Brockton. They've been doing a yeoman's work. Our National Guard have helped out in their continuing to vaccinate residents. Uh, as you may have heard, the Gillette Stadium today, June 15th, was the last day to vaccinate people at that location. But we want to make it more easier for the residents to get vaccinated. So in Brockton, we have the uh, Shaw Center, which is up next to Campanelli Stadium up the west side of Brockton, and our veterans. The VA hospital has done a yeoman's work. I'm honored to serve on the Veterans Committee, and we just passed some veterans legislation for the soldiers, so I'm going to get to in a minute. But the VA hospital has been doing a tremendous job going out to residents' homes, not just in Brockton, but other communities, other towns, to help get our veterans vaccinated. So it's so important we get our veterans vaccinated. And that's, in, uh, you know, there's so many people that have not still got vaccinated yet. And our young people, because just because you're young, don't feel you're immune to this deadly disease of COVID-19. And we've made tremendous strides. And I know today, June 15th, the Senate did, did open up a lot of things and put on hold some of the extensions but I know as we speak, the legislator is still trying to help out our residents, our businesses. We are going to be continuing extensions on outside dining to help our restaurants. We're helping with different meeting laws, open meeting laws and so forth to protect our residents and to help out uh, tenants, renters out there. And we're trying to help out our homeowners as well because they still have to pay their mortgages day in and day out on a monthly basis. So we have a lot of work we're still doing but we have to continue that. And one thing I want to mention here about the Holyoke Soldiers Home, about the veterans, we passed some funding and legislation. We authorized over $400 million in bonds for a design and new construction of a new soldiers home in Holyoke. And it was very successfully passed between the House of Representatives and the State Senate. It went to the governor. He vetoed a portion of that, which part is called the Project Labor Agreement. That helps to give fair wages and living wages to workers and helps union representation as well. So we're hoping that we're going to take that up and override his veto because that's so important we get a new efficient building for our soldiers home. There's still an ongoing investigation about what happened at the soldiers home long before COVID-19 came into our country and we're still researching that but we're going to look to build a new soldiers home for our veterans. But beyond that, we also are looking to appropriate $200 million in bond authorization as well to look at other homes for our veterans across the Commonwealth. So the Department of Capital Asset Management is looking at other homes throughout the Commonwealth for these veterans. I know in Brockton, 
A few years ago, we were able to get some money through the state to help out provide some more veterans' homes, but housing is a big issue out there. Homelessness is a big issue. We're trying to help out a lot of our veterans to get proper living quarters for them to live in a comfortable setting so they can live a comfortable life. And um, we're looking at passing some more veterans' legislation. I know we just had Flag Day here in the Commonwealth and in the country June 14th, and we had a little celebration at City Hall. It rained yesterday, so we had it indoors. But it's a great day to honor our flag and our country, and that's another big thing that our veterans fought for, to protect the rights to assemble in a free, assembled manner, and it's so important. One thing I wanted to discuss as well today is about the, the budget. And uh, things are doing much better in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts than they were last year, and we're also working with our federal delegation, our U.S. Senators and our Congress men and women, to get more funding, and they are working on getting more funding into our Commonwealth, but the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is in good shape. And one specific thing that we did, we increased Chapter 70 funds, and through the Student Opportunity Act, Brockton will be receiving more money than they ever had in the history of the Commonwealth, and we have to support our students. They're finally getting back to somewhat normalcy, back to school, and, uh, you know, some schools have been opening on a uh, per diem basis. Some have been opening full, fully five days a week, but things are opening up and getting back to somewhat normalcy. So the budget for Chapter 70 money, we passed the highest level of $5.503 billion, an increase of over $219.6 million over fiscal year 2021, highest increase in Chapter 70 money. And this creates a $40 million enrollment reserve fund targeted to stabilize school district adversely impacted by the pandemic. And enrollment has been down this year. A lot of students were educated at their household. It was very difficult for families because husbands and wives are trying to work every day and daycare is a big issue. We're trying to make sure that the parents are protected to have proper care when their students and their children were home. But as students get back to the normal day of going to school every day, this funding is gonna be a tremendous impact and increase in helping out our students and our teachers and our staff in the schools. We also passed over $1.16 billion of unrestricted general government aid, and that's a huge increase for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and local aid going back to our communities, and $9 million for reserve to cover parent fees. As I mentioned, parents having a tough time receiving subsidized funding for ch child care through the end of calendar year 2021, another difficult road that parents have gone through this year. And I want to give uh, credit to all the parents in the, in the teachers and all the people working, and especially our first responders, our firefighters, our police officers, our healthcare workers, ambulance, they've done a yeoman's work getting us through this pandemic. And, and not to forget our, our supermarket workers, the, the, people that the, the people that worked in the supermarkets this past year, they didn't close the markets, they still had to go to work every day, and we want to make sure they are vaccinated and protected because they were on the front lines as well. So I. I want to thank everybody for doing a yeoman's work. Getting back to the Student Opportunity Act, because of last year with the pandemic, it got put on hold, so we are fully funding it over a six-year period this year rather than the initial seven-year. And this is going to fully implement the recommendations from the 2015 Foundation Budget Review Commission. And as I mentioned, this is the biggest increase in funding for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And Brockton alone is going to get a bigger increase than they've ever seen in student funding. And, and Brockton is one of the gateway cities, like big cities like Lawrence and Lynn and Worcester and Boston. So they, they are going to get implemented the highest increase in funding in the history of the Commonwealth, which is so important. And uh, as I mentioned, we just celebrated Flag Day on June 14th. Father's Day is coming up, and we want to make sure we honor our fathers on June 20th. I know uh, it's been a tough year for a lot of families, and we, we honored our mothers in May. We want to honor our fathers out there, too, for Father's Day coming up. So that's another thing. And a couple other things that, that is coming up. We also voted on a fair share amendment that it could pass several times through the legislature, but people have fought it in the courts and it got kicked out. In the Fair Share Amendment, or so-called the Millionaire's Tax, it puts an increase on people making above and beyond a million dollars per year. So the first million dollars, their tax is a normal tax just like anybody else would be, but if they make above and beyond a million dollars, they are gonna be taxed at a slightly increased rate, and that is going on the ballot for the 
election of 2021 so the people, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the residents, will have a chance to make the decision whether they want to move that forward or not, and they have a right to vote on that, and it's so important. Um, as I mentioned, I'm working across the Commonwealth. My district goes from Northeastern through Brockton all the way over to Hanover down to Plimpton and Halifax, and I recently was at an Eagle Scout event, and I want to uh, give credit to these young men becoming Eagle, Eagle Scouts. Um, I was in the Boy Scouts at a church right next to the cable place here in the early 70s, and I was lucky that I made tenderfoot, and I give credit to these young boys and young men who become Eagle Scouts, and it's a great honor. So we present a resolution to, a, to an Eagle Scout troop this past weekend. That was in Hanover, and I was in East Bridgewater for a cultural event. I was in Hanson, and I live in Brockton, the city that I was born and raised in, so there's a lot of events going on in Brockton. As I mentioned, we had uh, Elder Abuse Awareness Day today in Brockton. We're having some other things coming up in Brockton. We're looking to continue to get funding into the city of Brockton, state funding to help out convert some of these buildings in downtown for housing units, for businesses, and so forth. And also, I know some of the restaurants and businesses that suffered during this pandemic, we were able to help get them grants um, to help sustain their businesses because some businesses have suffered, some have closed down, and it's been very difficult. And they wanted to keep their workers working, and some businesses I've given credit to because they kept their workers working on a day in and day out uh, daily situation. And it's been tough on them, especially the restaurant industry. So we, we passed some legislation. We're passing some extensions on the COVID relief to help them stay in business. They can do outdoor seating, et cetera. We're going to continue to keep that moving and help out the businesses. But again, if anybody needs to reach me for any ideas they think we, we should be doing at the state level, or if you want to come and visit me on our show, Brady Works, please contact my office at 617-722-1200. And I'm your state senator, Mike Brady. And again, I want to hear from you, the residents. I have a lot of great residents that contact our office once in a while with different ideas, and we're here to listen, and my staff is available all the time. So I have a great group of uh, people who work in my office, people that work in the district. I have a, a couple part-time workers who are always in the district as well. And we're here to listen to you, the residents. So please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, a couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, I mentioned the Holyoke Soldiers Foam, the budget. Um, with, now the budget, just to let you know, it passed the Senate and the House of Representatives. It's in what's called the Conference Committee and they're working out the details on that, and hopefully we can get that sent to the governor to get this revenue. This revenue is so important. Cities like Brockton would not survive without state funding, so it's so important. And the school funding is going to be a great help, but we need other funding. You know, we're trying to do transportation bills also because our roads are in deplorable condition, and we've got funding in the past for Brockton through Chapter 90 money. We did Route 123 over. We've done road work on Main Street and other parts of the Commonwealth and in my district, but we're looking to pass transportation bond money as well because it's so important. And we've done studies through the Old Colony Planning Council. Mary Walden has taken over that. She's done a yeoman's work with a staff over there. They have done studies all over the South Shore District in Plymouth County and Bristol County to check out the worst intersections, the most dangerous intersections, and um, we're trying to get more proper lighting more line designated lines and right turn only lanes, widen some of the roads, and this all comes back to funding. So we're hoping to get more funding. In this funding that we mentioned with this fair share amendment, that could go to things like that as well as schools and under local aid and so forth. So it's so important. We're looking at things for our environment too. I do a lot of work with environmental issues. I've worked with the Sierra Group and the Environmental League of Massachusetts. We're trying to move forward and get away from fossil fuels and move forward with good, clean, renewable energy. We've done solar fields in Brockton in the past. We've done it in other parts of the community, but we're looking to continue to move forward with that. That's so important. And, and to get these fossil fuels out of the Commonwealth, out of the country, and move forward with solar and win another great initiative. So that's just some of the things we're doing. Um, again, getting back to today's topic with the reporting elder abuse, if anyone wants a lawn sign for that, you can contact my office at 617-722-1200, but you can also contact the Council on Aging, which is 508-580-7811, 
And I know Janice Fitzgerald was here today. We had a little kickoff about uh, elder, elder abuse, abuse awareness day today. And um, also Plymouth County Center for Active Living, again, with Old County Elder Services. You can contact them. They are doing a great work. We want to help out our elderly population. And please be very weary of any scams out there, especially to our elderly people, because they're trying to take advantage of you. And I know it's been a very difficult road. Besides COVID, the housing market has been very difficult. I know rents have gone through the roof, and, and, and there's not much capacity for houses. The housing prices have gone through the roof, which is great if you own a piece of property, but it's very difficult for people to buy a piece of property. We're also working with mass housing to try to get funding for first-time home buyers initiatives. And for Gateway Cities, they have up to $25,000 of down payment assistance to buy a home in Brockton, because they are a gateway city. In the towns that are represented outside of Brockton, they get a little bit less, but we're doing a lot of work with Mass Housing to make sure there's help to finance them and get down payment assistance on housing. So uh, again, I want to reiterate the, the two numbers that's very important, the Council on Aging, 508-580-7811, and Old Colony Elder Services is 508-584-1561. And please, again, if you need to contact my office, I want to reiterate that number is 617-722-1200. And my email address is michael.brady at masenate.gov, michael.brady at masenate.gov. Uh, I want to hear from the residents because I work for you, I've got voted in by you, and I want to continue to do the work we've always done. I know locally in Brockton there's local elections coming up. It's so important to get out and vote. Part of the COVID extensions we're looking to do is to have early voting and also mail-in voting. So important because some people are still nervous about getting out in the public as things do open up in the Commonwealth and the city of Brockton. So, and people may have health situations where they're not able to get down and vote when the, when the voting days come up. So, we had early voting last year at the West Cape Mall. I know they're looking to do early voting again. We want to make sure that these cities and towns get reimbursed properly to cover the cost of early voting, but mail-in voting too, so important. And again, don't fall for the false information that's out there. They have very strict guidelines protecting what we send in for the ballots and everything else and they can't open them up till the day of the election. So they're sealed in a safe at City Hall in a safe manner. So again, don't fall for any false information out there because there is constantly people looking to scam our constituents, our friends, our elderly, and they're putting a lot of false information because they don't want you to vote. They want to they uh, oppress the people who want to vote. And I'll tell you, the last election when we elected President Biden, it was the largest turnout in the history of the country, never mind just Massachusetts, of people voting. And I think that was due to a lot of efforts by the, the candidates and the teams, but also the laws we passed in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and across state. Now, some states are trying to pass laws to hamper people from voting and making it more difficult for them. But in Massachusetts, we want to make it more easily accessible for our constituents to be able to vote in a legal and safe manner. We don't support illegal voting or anything like that. You have to be a resident, you have to be a citizen, and you have to make sure that the address is proper and so forth. But we want to increase people to have better access to good, safe voting. So that's why, again, as I mentioned, we're looking to pass on this COVID extensions, more legislation to have it more easily accessible for people to vote by mail, early voting. Even if you're going away or you have a job situation, you can go to City Hall, talk to your elections division at City Hall in Brockton, all your clerks in the other towns, and they do allow you to maybe go in on an early manner, say a week or whatever you have to do if you're not going to be around on election day. And they are doing a yeoman's work in making it easily and accessible to vote early. So uh, don't be hammered by any false information out there. So, right. so I want to reiterate about the fair share amendment that just passed through a constitutional convention within the Commonwealth between the House and the Senate. That's going to be on the ballot in the year 2022, on next year's election, so the voters will have a chance to vote on that, whichever way they choose to support it or vote against it. It'll be on the ballot in the year 2022, called the Fair Share Amendment. Thank you. Again, my name is Mike Brady. I'm grateful to be here today. And, and again, I want to re reiterate that my phone number, because my office is always available, and if they're in the middle of something, we will get back to you. 
my office number is 617-722-1200, and my email address at the State House is michael.brady at masenate.gov. Another thing we've been dealing with has been unemployment issues, and I know people are still having a problem with unemployment, and that was probably 90% of the calls my office and staff got before the PPPs came available and before the vaccine supplies became more readily accessible is unemployment issues. And I know I still get calls from constituents and residents with unemployment issues. So again, if you're still dealing with unemployment issues or roadblocks or whatever, and, and, and even the RAF program with rental assistance, please don't hesitate to contact my office. They, we are here for you. And um, I want to continue to do the best job possible for my constituents. I am very honored to be your state senator. I've been born and raised in the district. I've been here all my life. I'm a homeowner. And I know it's been very difficult for a lot of homeowners out there through this pandemic. Things are getting better, though. People are getting back to work. There is uh, opportunities for businesses to open up in, in uh, accessibility things. The parks are open. I know we got to get exercise. I got to get more exercise. Um, I actually lost weight during the pandemic because I think I was eating healthy rather than eating out at restaurants. But you know, once the restaurants open up, you put it back on. I want to help support our restaurants, but. Get out there while the weather gets good. Get some fresh air and enjoy yourself. And uh, we have a great community in Brockton. We have a great group of people from our local elected officials to our state delegation. I'm very honored to be in a great team with my three representatives, Representative Claire Cronin, who's a majority leader, Representative Jerry Cassie, who represents the downtown area, north and south, and where our, our cable facility is in Brockton and downtown. Jerry represents that area. And Rep. Michelle Dubois, who represents east side of Brockton, and we share some of the towns like East Bridgewater together. And I serve with a great delegation in the state Senate. Some of my district, I, I abut Senator Watson Timothy. He splits East Bridgewater with myself and part of Eastern with myself. And uh, we work very well bipartisan work between Republicans and senators. No one does it alone. I'm very grateful for the team effort we have in the state house. And we have great leadership as a Senate president in our Ways and Means Chair. Uh, Mike Rodericks represents a district similar to mine. He has Fall River, which is a little bit smaller than the city of Brockton, and he has several towns outside of Fall River. He's been a great friend and supporter. I've been able to work with him in the budget to get a lot of good initiatives for the budget, not just the school funding, which is so important. We've got funding to clean up bacteria where Brockton gets a water source from Silver Lake and Furnace Brook and Stumpbrook. That water comes through several towns to get to Brockton. We want to make sure our water is safe. I know they do continuing testing. We also um, passed some legislation to move forward with a desalinization plant down in Dighton because Brockton ran into a water shortage. Now we've got plenty of water. So it helps business growth. It helps our residents because you drive around some communities outside of this area and you see, you know, banned water issues. They can't even water the lawns, never mind grow their gardens for vegetables and whatnot. We don't have those problems in the city of Brockton. Through a lot of work with our delegation, we have a desal plant. But we want to make sure that water is safe and drinkable and portable and all of the above. So we got some money in the budget, myself working with my delegation to help clean up the, any bacteria issues, any, any water sources that feed into Silver Lake that comes to Brockton, as well as the desalinization plant. And uh, again, I know it's been a tough road for everybody, so please don't hesitate to contact my office, any help we can be. I'm grateful to be your state senator, Mike Brady, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work on your behalf. And um, any ideas you think we should be doing, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm looking to have more guests on my show, too. I had Ann Beauregard, who was a wealth of information. She served on the city council here a few years ago, and uh, she's still very active in the community. She, she works very well with our constituents. She gives me more information than just about anybody. My staff is here available for you. Uh, I want to let everybody know one last time, if they need to contact my office, again, the number is 617-722-1200, 617-722-1200. And my email address is michael.brady at massmasenate.com. Gov, michael.brady at masenate.gov. And again, I'm grateful to my staff. I'm grateful to you, the constituents, because we work for you. We're here for you. You're our boss. Any ideas, again, you think we should be doing at the state level, please don't hesitate to contact us. And um, 
We're trying to get more funding for our district. We have some good news coming in with funding from the Commonwealth into Brockton and other communities. The school funding is going to be tremendous this year, but we can't sit on our past laurels. We're always looking for new ideas and new initiatives to get better help and funding for the communities that we represent and pass proper le legislation. Mental health illness is another big issue we're working on, uh, and we did provide some funding in the budget this year for that. So again, I want to thank everybody for listening today. I'm going to continue to have this show periodically when we can make time. Again, this show is called Brady Works. Please, if anybody wants to come on the show, don't hesitate to contact us. Anybody who has any ideas, and even ideas you think we should be discussing on our show, please don't hesitate to contact us. And, and again, I'm, I'm thankful for, for all our constituents listening today. I'm Mike Brady. I'm your state senator, and I represent the second Plymouth Bristol district from northeast and through Brockton all the way over to Hanover down to Plimpton and Halifax. I thank you for listening and watching today, and I look forward to continuing to work on your behalf as your state senator. Again, thank you. I am Mike Brady, your state senator.